Welcome to Fresh Off the Boat, and I'm delighted to be with Ananya Khanna. She chose a very contrarian path, and I've seen her journey through, what, 2013. She went to a university in India, law school in particular in India. In India, as you know, we have a five-year law degree. There are extreme sort of selection criteria for most law schools. And uh, to graduate and get the right internships and then work in the legal system in India comes with its own challenges and surprises. So love to hear about all of that, Ananya, from you. So why don't you introduce yourself and take it from there? Hi, hi, Arjun. Thank you for having me. My name is Ananya Khanna. I am a lawyer by profession, as mentioned. And um, to give a background of myself, I am born and brought up in Delhi. I was educated in Delhi as well. I went to modern school. After that, I went to Jindal, five-year program, as mentioned. And it wasn't one of the the harder ones, as I just mentioned, but um, it it is still um, it was I would say one of the premier institutions in the country, and I, I I believe that I gained so much from there, and subsequently actually during the five years I um, do, do, yeah so anyway uh, during the five years I I think I did about nine internships and one summer program. Um, to break that down a little bit, I started my first internship. It didn't make sense to do a law internship because in the first semester of college, you studied torts and things like that. So you really don't, you can't really help a law firm or a law, law chamber. So I did an NGO internship in Mumbai, which was quite interesting. I got an idea of policy, which is the policy is like the sister of law. It's like, you know, based on legislation, policy is formed and vice versa. They, they are intertwined very intrinsically in fact so that was that then i did a bunch of different firms which is your full service law firms and um, post that i i think around the third year is when i started to realize that litigation is my true calling and arguing in court and in fact just going to court and being more active rather than having um, a desk set up which is great for those who can do it which is your Again, your full service law firm um, uh, kind of thing where you uh, you work in a desk, you don't go to court. Uh, so for me, that didn't seem as exciting as going to court and being there in the thick of things. So I started uh, doing like internships for litigation based internships. And that's how I eventually reached where I am today. I My background is I started my, my first job in 2020. And it's really interesting, in fact. Um, I was the Corona batch is what our seniors in the fraternity like to call us. So basically, when I joined the profession in, in 2020, August, I think we were already in the lockdown and we were in, we were in one of the phases of the lockdown. And I, I remember my first ever appearance in court was online from my house. So that, that is in itself was like a really huge learning curve. And then I, I, I joined a CGSE office, that's Central Government Standing Council, uh, for Mr. Amit Mahajan. He's since been elevated to an honorable judge at the Delhi High Court. And um, I was there for nearly two years, till, till about when he was elevated. Then I, 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 I like to joke about this. I raised him to the bench. I, jo I joined a judge in the Delhi High Court itself, Justice Siddharth Nadul, as a law clerk. I did that for a year. Subsequently, I actually had a very interesting nine months. I did a bunch of freelance work. I did a bunch of independent work. I tried to sort of figure out the field for myself. Have a, you know, like dip my toes in the independent council pool. But having done that for nine months, I realized that it, 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 it's not so structured when you're doing it for yourself. Even though I was independently going to court every day, irrespective of having work or not, I was just going, observing, sitting into different, different courtrooms, because that's what excites me. So, but that nine months stint, when I concluded, I concluded about three and a half years at the Delhi High Court. And um, post that, I felt that I need structure. I still require some structure to sort of launch my own thing. So, which is why I decided to take a job. I currently work at Karanjawala and Company. It's one of the only litigation firms. So we're a full service litigation firm. We don't 
work corporate we only work in this in, in the courtrooms so i am in the hindustan times office which is actually behind us um where we, we are only supreme court teams we have four teams and we all supreme court teams so i am on one of those my partner is mr deep mali banerji i um so yeah we primarily work in the supreme court we have some amount of matters obviously because it's interconnected so we have some amount in other forums but it's primarily supreme court because i felt that that's something that i don't have enough exposure of and again if coming to a firm what you you learn is a lot of structure a lot of bookkeeping stuff a lot of you know um like client management and things like that which which i felt that required so that's where i am today in august i'll complete four formal years as a lawyer and i think including my internships i have about 5 years well that's a great summary of all the work that you've done but i'm sure there are so many stories in between right right of course ala which we don't know of <laughs> Um, you want to yeah. uh, you know get the dirty linen out but right it was pretty exciting to choose to be a litigator early on in your career working right. you know at chambers of two very eminent uh, um, advocates who then right. became uh, you know judges what is it that you would advise students uh, who are interested in the field of law who want to be litigators what is the mindset and what is the training and what expectation level setting expectations they should have in terms of the work environment and timings of work and you know the nature of people you tend to randomly interact with when you're a litigator okay so for any um, student school school graduate who's looking or law school graduate who's looking to become a litigator i have like maybe four pieces of advice um so one would be that believe don't believe all the myths but do believe some of them <laughs> so when i say that i mean so one of the main things that um, deters people or like restricts people from taking up a career in litigation is the money so the general understanding is that if you join if you want to become a litigator you will not make any money especially for the first 5 to 10 years while that is largely true i believe that there are a lot of ways around it and you so if you if you if you set your mind to it you can find a lot of work in a freelance way in a drafting way in so many other manners that even if your employer the lawyer or the chambers that you work at don't pay a substantial amount and you want to be earning a let's say x let's say you make 10 rupees and you want to make 20 i'm saying that there is a lo- there's more than enough scope to make that 20 so that's one uh, another um piece of advice would be that um, you know keep your head down there's too much to learn i still believe that i have you know like miles and miles to go before i sleep and even like when i say that i know there's a lot that i have been able to understand so you you'll always remain a student of the law i feel like till the day you almost die you will remain a student of the law so be open to that don't be um, conceited of your knowledge because um, you will be knocked down many pegs if you sort of come in with that attitude and i felt that with the younger generation that this is a slightly a problem area apart from that i think it's a great field if you find it exciting if someone finds it exciting to the courtrooms and you know the the environment and just court craft in general if you find any of that exciting or you you know you maybe you were a debater or so and so i would certainly recommend that you give it a shot you do at least two three meaningful internships to kind of beta test if that you know works for you that 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 would be my advice so definitely beta test everything if you want to work at a firm make sure you work at three four firms to understand what that's like another uh, um sort of thing that i would ask people to be a little wary of is that yes lawyers do tend to have a temperament uh, a lot a lot of them and i think if you are able to find a right pace you you can sort of work around that see the thing is that it's a high pressure environment at all times right people's lives are on the line if you're a criminal lawyer people's companies and the entire you know there's so much of money is on the line when you're working for companies or however so it's it's a very high pressure environment which is why a lot of people um sort of are um to say the least i guess sort of abrasive in their manner of speaking so i i would ask you not to uh, like not let that put you off or not let that stop you from take, doing a career which is extremely fruitful 
and um, yeah i think that would be my advice and all the best i think you know it's i love it and i, I don't i don't know like i think that should be that's what that's what should matter you should love it <laughs> in your preparation during your years at law school you also took that stint and did a summer program at uc berkeley right so what was that about how is it how the, how is the teaching different from what you had experienced or overall what did you feel uh, by talking to professors or other students of law in the us right what is it that they gain in in their experience in their university environment compared to maybe things that are offered at schools in india right so i actually was fairly lucky because jindal kind of does follow uh, an american based university system but what i felt starkly different than usual indian colleges is that there is a lot of practical based knowledge so for instance i went uh, to study a course which um, basically teaches you of the intersection between law and journalism so it's like uh, like investigative journalism and things like that and how it how, again it's a intertwined they are intertwined industries so for that to teach us that they took us for instance to the bloomberg head office they made us understand how you know the, the actual research is conducted and then they took us to stanford for a lecture they brought in three four actual investigative journalists who are like pioneers of the field to make make us understand in a much more practical manner what exactly they are trying to teach us it's not just theoretical because there's only so much can the theory that the theory can do for you right so i think that's one thing that the american education system has really got a knack for it that they they really immerse you in 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 trying to understand that piece of knowledge or that piece of information so that uc berkeley was really fun apart from the education where it was it was a it was a really nice experience professions like being a doctor or lawyer anything which has technical knowledge which needs to be upgraded constantly require an environment where you can do that either through associations or continued professional development or university programs what are the options from here suppose you already reached at a stage which is quite high of being an advocate at the highest law courts in the country what would you think would be the next educational step for you so i have uh, very seriously considered my masters and um so when i sort of wanted to see, seek advice in this regard i felt whoever has done a masters recommends for you to do a masters and whoever hasn't <laughs> recommends you against it so that's i found that quite interesting uh, so all the lawyers who i sort of you know i asked many many people that you know what would their uh, advice on that be so i am looking into that so possibly in 25 is when i'll be doing a year of my llm but because this is because actually i have a very strong interest in policy so i want to study governance in my llm program so if i think maybe someone has a piece of the education which they want to study more then it maybe makes sense and if you see in litigation it's not going to directly help me but i feel like no knowledge can ever go to waste so it won't it might not directly help me but it will certainly indirectly help me so i do think i see value in that so i will be looking into i of course i'll be contacting you arjun <laughs> within llm i've had students who uh, i would advise and they've come back they come with very specific interests just like you uh, policy right. or arbitra arbitration arbitration right or international yeah right. law right or, there are few who've done uh, human rights law it's very specific right. Right. programs in specific universities which have uh, a higher sort of uh, reputation in those areas within law so right. in policy since it's a fairly interdisciplinary sort of um, field how would it you would be the most common intersections with law and for a layman let's say and what would be your specialist like you uh, seeking from that uh, degree program okay so um the so in fact law is intrinsically uh, in, involved in almost everything that we do it governs our lives so to speak 
and I understand that obviously um, someone may not uh, feel that way. But if I, if I were to give you an example, like tomorrow you decide that you want to have a startup, you will have to register it under some of the other act. For that, you need a lawyer. So I'm just saying, like almost anything that you do, like we we intertwine. You know, if you want to, if you want your rights asserted, or for instance, you get a faulty phone from Amazon, you have to file a consumer complaint for that. Things like that. Just getting back to the masters. I think I, I didn't maybe get your question too correctly, but uh, so basically for me personally, I, I want to do a master's because like I said, I, I'm a student of the law and I'll always be one. So I felt like there was a lot of things that were left during my undergraduate study, which, which I couldn't sort of do. In fact, I graduated with, I think, seven or eight extra credits, but I still felt that there was so much that I couldn't uh, learn. So in fact, actually in, in uh, September 22, I did a policy course here in India, which was for um, working professionals at the Indian at the Indian School of Public Policy. So I did do that, which further in, enhanced, uh, like further confirmed that I want definitely do want to do a master's. But you know, I think what happens is that if if you sort of get you take the plunge and you get into litigation, then you have so much ongoing, which is there's no there's, there's almost no end to it. So I'm trying to find a way to sort of do both and uh, for me the masters will also will also have and it, so i'm going to be looking into the uk for my masters because they have a common law system and actually primary primarily most of our laws originally were founded based off of the british um legal system so i think that would make a lot of sense even though i mean america is is um the 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 king of colleges and has the IVs and everything. But for me, I think it'll make more sense to do the UK because I'm also looking to become dual qualified, like a solicitor in England and Wales. And I already have a license here in India. So that, that, that'll be the angle to learn more, essentially, to have that one year and just read not files, but like books. So and sort but, of maybe a break. You know, why not? It's interesting that, you know, so that practice in uh, with dual certifications uh, to do so in two countries. Uh, in terms of the formalities for that, so does an LLM qualify a student to be able to work in the UK? Um, so membership here and this and that. right so with only so now actually there's new laws that have come up so now they've opened borders across the uk and india so now actually you don't even need the llm you can in fact appear for the sue exams and directly just uh, like obviously you have to give the exams and then you have to give some certain interviews and stuff and you can qualify you can get a certification as a, a solicitor or a barrister in england and wales similarly People who are qualified in England and Wales can do the same in India. They can give certain exams and become qualified lawyers here. Um, the the LLM for me will just add, enhance that. If you don't give those exams, you can still work as a paralegal. As long as you can find someone to take you, you can still work as a paralegal based off your Indian degree. Thank you so much. This has been uh, quite, a, <laughs> quite a bonus session for all of right. us. <laughs> we are not generally talking about going to the US, Canada, Singapore, US, right. other countries in Europe. But uh, kids who stay back, I mean, calling you kids might not be the right, but young professionals who are young professionals. kids is uh, quite a refreshing uh, thing to do. So a special interview will always remain fun for me. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.